Okay, uh, today I'm going to be reviewing an instrument that I bought recently, which is a Con Constellation 28A Cornet. And if you look at the lead pipe, you will see that it is a Cornet receiver. It has an A on the lead pipe just there, which indicates that it's a Cornet. Um, the lead pipe itself goes from here and it goes all the way down to in here. So this uh, tuning slide at the front is actually quite short compared to a trumpet. The other thing is that the lead pipe sticks out quite far back uh, beyond the end of the instrument. Uh, the bore of this instrument is I think 0 0.430 which is uh, very small um, by modern standards but the bell is very large. If you look at the bell flare there uh, that really makes up for it. So, um, it also has quite a wide wrap, and it does this by. I'll show you the valves. <laughs> when I opened this up, I thought they were bottom sprung valves. They look like bottom sprung valves, but in fact, what's going on here is that the spring is inside there. Uh, this particular one's got quite good compression. Um, it was made in 1967. I'm running it on slightly thicker valve oil. I'm using Burp valve oil. Um, a bit of a story to how I got this. I bought this from Austin Custom Brass and they declared it to customs using their online store um, description, which was rare silver cornet. And unfortunately, that caused it to be impounded by the antiquities people at UK Customs and they didn't open it and they should have just opened it or x-rayed it or something but they didn't and it took a month to get it out of Customs however in that process they allowed me to declare what the Customs code for it was and normally when you import things from the US they stick 20% VAT on everything and in fact musical instruments used ones aren't 20% so um, I ended up saving about £200 on the import uh, cost of this by declaring it correctly. So, uh, every cloud has a silver lining. Um, so, I think the best thing to do is try and play on it. I will try on this microphone, or playing off to the side of it, and we'll see if you can hear anything. That may or may not have worked. If it didn't work, I will edit in something that I've recorded on my normal recording setup, which is an SM57 microphone. Um, I'm playing today on a Dennis Wick RW2, which is not my normal mouthpiece, um, but uh, it does seem to work quite well with it. It's quite mouthpiece sensitive. If you put in something that's a little bit... Um, this is a vintage, this is a Najum and the Joom Vintage uh, 1, which is made by Curry, and it's a little bit like the Curry Vintage mouthpiece, but the backboard's different. So, I'll try and do some uh, Big Spider Beck type thing. <clears throat> Pull the tuning slide out like this. Thank <laughs> you. 
So the question is, can you make it sound like a brass band cornet? Well, the real problem with that is is not the shape of it. Uh, the issue really is that this is a very small bore instrument. So I can make it sound like a small bore cornet um, of the 1950s or 40s or something like that, before we had the large bore cornets coming in. So I'll try playing something. So basically it can sound quite sweet. Um, I would say it's a brighter sounding instrument than an ATA, which I've also owned. Um, um, but it has a very, very good upper register compared to that. So. Well, maybe not on that mouthpiece. <laughs> I'll try the Nizhum, it's just a little bit uh, shallower. Well, it's got an upper register, which obviously it doesn't really need, but um, it plays very well in tune, and that's one of the most interesting things, is that it, it is such an even blow from top to bottom that um, you can really you really feel very comfortable playing on it. It's a great horn just for noodling around on and uh, it's a great uh, addition to what I have which um, brings up another story which is that uh, if you don't live in the UK you probably haven't heard that uh, the pound has dropped against the dollar significantly and uh, I was told this week that uh, Backstrad Trumpet, which was selling for about 2,200 new here. It had gone up to 2,500 because of exchange rate differences. And Phil Parker's are saying that the next batch will be 3,000. So my plan when I bought this cornet was to sell one of my other instruments. But given the economic climate, I think I'm going to hang on to it uh, at the moment and uh, wait and see if things stabilise. Nobody's buying anything, so there really isn't any point in trying to sell it. Um, I don't have handy a very bright mouthpiece. Maybe I'll just go and get one. I'll show my little box of tricks here. Okay, this is a Warburton 1MD. Uh, on an 8 star backbore and it's on the longer backbore So, with a more standard orchestral trumpet mouthpiece in it, you can make this sound like a trumpet. Um, it still has a darker sound, though. Um, it feels a little bit 
all long model cornets, even the ones that have the twist in them, you know, have a sort of fruity sound to them in my experience, a sort of broader sound. And um, Is a broader sound than you would get on a uh, most trumpets. No, obviously you get trumpets that are as broad as that, but this is a very wide palette of sound that's that's you're capable of getting out of it. So that's it, Con 2080, and it's a cornet. There is a 38B. This is Constellation. I should have said uh, Constellation cornet. There is a 38B trumpet, and I think how that came about, it came out about a bit later than this. They took the body of this, but they put a trumpet lead pipe and a trumpet tuning slide on it. Um, and that was played by Chet Baker at one stage in his career, and he had huge success on that instrument. And I think Maynard Ferguson may have paid, played a, a constellation at some stage as well. Um, but uh, this is the cornet which preceded that by a few years. And this one's actually as old as me. It's the same age as me, 1967. So thanks for watching. I hope that made sense. I hope the recording worked. If it didn't, you're going to see some inserts in this video. And uh, bye for now.